Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's April 12, 2020, and today what I'm going to do is share with you uh, some of the pruning challenges I have with some 8 to 10 year old apple trees that were some of the first apple trees I planted in the food forest 8 to 10 years ago. And, uh, and the trees have grown pretty well. They, uh, one of the, the three trees that I'm going to share with you really pr has produced tremendous volumes of apples as well. And these are all standard rootstock. In other words, they haven't been put on semi-dwarf or dwarf rootstock to decrease the, the size that these trees would ultimately uh, get. And as a result, if you have standard, uh, a standard rootstock, these trees are going to just get to their, whatever their genetic determinants are, the height-wise as well. And because of our high winds we have here, and my concern as I get older, not wanting to be climbing up really uh, high heights and getting in precarious situations to try and harvest fruit, uh, I decided after a couple years of pruning uh, these trees, I decided to uh, to change the form of the trees and make it so that they were rel relatively almost like an, uh, an open vase, like you would prune a peach or a plum or an apricot or any of those crosses. Um, and, and that was so that I could decrease the harvest height and make the tree more manageable and be, uh, and be more apt, uh, more easily accessible for uh, doing the springtime pruning as well. Now, when I first started these trees, I really hadn't learned about training trees and trying to really in, to, to change the form when they're very, very young. And I've been busy doing all the construction around here and doing some of the earthworks, all the other things that I do. And as a result, you know, I would miss opportunities to do that early water sprout, a uh, water sprout uh, pruning. And when I when I say water sprout, uh, when you prune, like I'm pruning right now, but while the trees are still dormant, <clears throat> what that does is that that stimulates the tree to put to put on lots of vegetative growth, not fruiting growth, but lots of vegetative growth. So we'll get lots of upright, some water sprouts, uh, limbs that go straight up as a result of that. And the easiest way to manage those is, is, you know, like once a week going out and just taking your thumb when they're fresh, uh, young, green verticals go, coming up, you just rub them off with your finger. That kills them off. They heal up really easily. And that's probably the best way of dealing with all that early spring vegetative growth that you don't want going in either going straight up or going into a location where it's going to cross with another limb. Uh, or go into an air into an area where you're going to drive through as well So just always knowing what the, the ultimate shape and form of the tree is going to be um, And I really hadn't had enough experience when I first planted these or when I first did my first pluning and the lack of training So as a result, I've had to go out and hack these trees uh, a couple of times and today I've, I've really been hacking them a lot and that's getting rid of uh, limbs that are too close to each other, getting with, rid of water sprouts that aren't just one year old, that they're two years old, and I have one year old sprouts as well because I got working on the greenhouse, working in the gardens, all those things. Lots of excuses, but I just didn't uh, set, a, set aside the time required to go on out there and regularly do a little rubbing uh, pruning, you know, just, just knocking off the, that those green, fresh growth uh, that was going in a direction that I didn't want it. And I'll make another video talking about the deer rub challenges that I've had with some of the other trees in, in, an, in a future video. But today I just wanted to concentrate on these trees. And so when I'm pruning a tree, I, I, starting off now when they're young, and we'll make videos going over to the second food forest so you can see some that are two and three year old trees now, some that are four years old. Uh, my approach is using tree tubes and cages and then using limb spreaders, all of those things. I'll go over all of those things in, in, in a future video. Um, and the other thing is that I would say is uh, I've gone over in the past in other videos knowing about uh, the angle of the limb. If it's, if it's really tight to the trunk of the, of the tree, you get embedded bark between the limb and that trunk. 
So you really want to have a limb that comes off at about 45 degrees angles, not a 90 degree angle. It puts a lot of stress on it. Not a 25 degree angle. You want to have it about 45 degrees. And what you do is you look at where the union is between those two limbs and make sure that the bark isn't becoming embedded because that allows moisture to get down there, especially when you're in an area where you have lots of freeze and thaws. That material get in there, then decay starts getting in there as well, and you just get an opportunity for disease and damage to wind or heavy fruit bearing and all. And we have the problems with the deer rub here as well. So each one of these challenges that we have is have I've learned over the over the years how I really want to do some modifications, and sometimes it means I get real radical with my pruning to try and either salvage the tree or ultimately cut it down to a point where I go ahead and I graft onto the main trunk from it. So those are all things that, that I'm thinking about as I'm going through this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my helmet cam on with a GoPro camera on it. I tried recording videos yesterday doing using the same technique uh, with some swale work that I was doing and unfortunately you don't really get to see the, uh, the work because the camera got bumped up a bit. So I'll try and see if I can get the camera at an angle where I'm pointing it all so you can get some benefit out of it. Now, what I've done here, <coughs> excuse me, besides removing the water sprouts that are two years old and one year old and some extra limbs and all, I'm trying to maintain a balance of the tree, have good airflow to the tree, but I'm hacking off limbs that are this big around. And, uh, and that's more opportunity for disease and it's a lot of energy that the tree has got to put into healing those, those wounds as well. So really paying attention to where the collar is on the, on the limb, where it, where, it, where it extends out from the trunk and trying not to cut into that collar so that it will, you know, the, the bark will work its way around and cover the area. Um, so some of these things are, are not done well, unfortunately. But I'm going to share that with you because part of what I want to do on this channel is share with you the mistakes I make, uh, the, the attempts I make to correct some of those things, and even if the things fail at that point, what, what I have in, up my sleeve for a, a last-ditch salvage, if at all possible. So I'm going to put the GoPro camera on the helmet cam, and we'll go out there and take a look at things. Okay, I'm out here in the edge of the first food forest. Pond 3 is over there, uh, Sugar Shack, the solar panels, Honey Hut over there, and into the, the first food forest, the main part of it over there. And we'll make more videos when we're pruning over there. But right over here, I want to show you one of the trees before I prune it. Now this is a much younger tree, and this is a semi-dwarf. Um, uh, uh, Macintosh type variety of an apple tree and you can see it's a semi-dwarf if we look down towards the base of the of the tree where the rootstock uh, is still just above the ground level even though the grass is up above there and uh, this is a tree that I tried uh, doing as a modified central leader but I realized it was although it is a semi-dwarf tree it would have been much larger as well now, two years ago was the last time I pruned this tree, and you can see the, the, uh, the branches and their orientation. I did not do a great job, but these, these are water sprouts right here. So this is two years ago, and each one of these are one year ago. Great scion wood right here. If I wanted to graft this, this Mac variety, this is another one. This is two years old, this water sprout here. These are as well, they, they shoot up. So I went ahead and pruned it. You can see the spots where I pruned it. I pruned it appropriately here. And you can see that the, uh, the healing process is going along very, very well. Each one of these spots where I've been pruning it, they've been healing pretty well. Now, this isn't a perfectly balanced tree. Uh, what I'll probably end up doing is taking this limb off and just leaving this one, this one, this one, and this one on. Hopefully that's showing up. And then I'll work on it to get rid of all the water sprouts going up, getting rid of all of the laterals that are going over and crossing into each other, like all of these things here. We don't want those. Every time the wind blows, those those limbs as they grow are just going to keep rubbing against each other 
Uh, and you know, you could see where I pruned this limb off. This was a three-way system here in the past. And this one's healing over pretty well. That's healed over fairly well as well. So you want to leave the collar. This one, I cut into the collar. So that's a, that's a wound that, uh, that could always be an entrance for disease to get in there. Uh, so that's important. The other thing I wanted to show in this part here is the angle that these limbs are coming off. If this is the main trunk, you could see that the the bark here is bridging. It bulges up and doesn't work its way down in between this limb and this trunk. Hopefully this is showing up. So this is a tree I haven't pruned yet. This will be an easier tree to prune. This I'm not managing this nearly as well as the trees that I'm that I'm uh, that I've started oh, in the last few years. But at least this is a bit better. Uh, and I do I do like the apples when they're large semi dwarfs or their uh, standards to really open them up and get the get the lateral branches off. But I don't want them like I did here, all at the same level. Geez, all of these branches are all coming off within a few inches of each other. I'd much rather have this limb come down here, this limb come off right here, and maybe this limb here come off a little bit higher, and then prune them so that these limbs actually have some uh, not go, not so so much going up, so vertical, coming out more lateral. The problem is when I drive by with pieces of equipment, so this is a roadway here that comes off the main roadway, I always have to think about what am I going to be bumping into? What about the big snowblower when I'm blowing these whole areas to get out here during the winter months? When we have four foot of snow, that's a lot of snow to blow and smash into these trees. So that's that's things that I think about when I'm pruning the trees. Now we'll look at, so these are just some of the limbs, and you can see the size of these limbs that I've been taking off of this uh, Red Delicious one over here. And these are all pieces from this one. And uh, here's a spot where when I pruned this one a few several years ago, and you can see by the marks here, I used a chainsaw to do this, and it's having a hard time doing it because I cut into the collar here. But I realized that the angle here was just a little bit too tight for it. Here I am cutting these ones off here. I cut into the collar on this one as well because I had limited space to work in. Hopefully this is showing up. This one is starting to heal over okay. I damaged the collar a little bit right here. This one will probably heal okay. Now my, my uh, pruners are getting a little bit weak. This will probably heal well. This one, I cut into the collar here a little bit, but I think I'll be okay here. Uh, these ones are gonna be problems. And those are ones that did big water sprouts that took me two or three years to get to. And you can see I really hacked these off tremendously. So, what I'm trying to do with this one now is salvage it, and I'll try and train some of these limbs. So this is two-year-old growth. This is this last season's growth. And so they're still flexible on some of these trees. And I could put a little bit of weight on this, or I could use a, uh, a limb a dangler. And I have limb split, um, uh, limb spreaders in the back of Pepe there as well where my tools are. Uh, so I've gone through and I've hacked off a lot of limbs where they're crossing, where they'd rub together, really reducing it a lot. I may go ahead and there will be some water sprouts that start to come up from the sides here. I may go ahead and manage those so I can go ahead and put scion wood onto those and put other varieties on this and see is this a tree that I can salvage? So this is one of the trees. So this is one of the Red Delicious. This one is a really super productive tree right here. This is one of our green apples. Again, I really hacked this up terribly. You can see all of the limbs here. Uh, this right here from 
hopefully you can see this. So this is a point where last season's growth began. So this is all this past season's growth. So this would be the wood that I wanted, that I would save if I needed to put more of this green scion wood right on to one of those red delicious apples. So all of this just came off of this tree here. And you'd see here, I had gotten to this point here and took off two, there was a limb here initially that I took off. And then these two water sprouts came out two years ago and I cut those off. But as you could see, I cut into, or I didn't get all the way down right here to the, uh, to the collar. And you see the collar starting to grow up here fairly well. My, my shears, I gotta come back through here and see if I can clean the rest of these up. And when they get dull, that's when you start damaging some of the, uh, the bark around it. And hopefully some of this will heal. But I was getting frustrated and, and I quit. So this would be nice. This tree would be uh, fairly well pruned, uh, uh, managed if I had this limb, limb coming off at this height, the second limb coming off at this height, this one here coming off at this height, and this one here going up. So in other words, keeping at least, at least, you know, at least five inches between, maybe these two here are good. These two here are too close together. And, and when these new ones start to shoot up, just going up and rubbing them off with your thumb would be the best thing. So there's gonna be limbs that are gonna shoot out from here and start to come up. So I just have to rub those off if I can get myself up here. And I don't want, when the wind is blowing, any of these limbs to be bumping into each other. <clears throat> There'll be tons of vegetative growth that comes off of this tree, and I know it looks terrible at this point. And you can see some of the areas here that are healing over fairly well. Hopefully these are showing up. And other ones that have almost completely healed over down there. Now we'll look at one more red delicious over here. And so this is what the other red delicious looks like. Uh, this isn't a bad angle from the trunk here. This is the main trunk that I cut off the part above it. But these two here are coming off at the same level. That's not good. I'd much rather it come off here instead of there. Uh, but again, you know, I'm still learning as I go through this whole process. And this is a, is a wound that hasn't healed over yet. I'm not, not sure why that wound hasn't healed over. But you can see the amount of growth I took off of this, the, the, the limbs here. I don't know, maybe you can see two of the Canada geese there. Hopefully they're going to nest here this year. That's pond three and pond four over there. Uh, let's see. Oh, here are, here's an example of some of the limb spreaders. So now this is a pear tree. Uh, is this a Bartlett? Yeah, <laughs> label no longer. Lo this looks like a Bartlett. It, it could be a Bartlett uh, pear here. Uh, and you can see I've got it in a cage. Now I originally have these all in tree tubes, those white tree tubes that you've seen in other videos. The thing about Bartlett's, is, I mean the, about pears, you can let their limbs, like that. that's almost a 45 degree angle right there. That's almost a 45 degree angle. This is less than a 45. I would never want this angle on an apple tree or a peach or a plum. But on a pear, the, the, the bark is not embedded in between those two, two layers there. Uh, so what I wanna do with these is use a limb spreader like this to go ahead and force the limbs to have more openness. And see here are some of the limb spreaders here. And I took off some bits, some dead uh, material here, but I'll be pruning this during the season as well and decide just what I think of it as, as the season goes on. Pawpaws, uh, aronia berries. Uh, what's this one here, a peach or an apple? This is, an, is a, one of the older apples, uh, classic apple, legacy apple, I guess. This is terrible how these labels just don't make it here. Oh. Well, this is an apple. Uh, here's one of the things. So I need to come through and start pruning these appropriately here now. Like I really don't want these, both of these limbs coming off so close at the same level. 
I don't like them being this level to start out with, but having one here and one here and having this one be up here, so I need to go through and make this a modified central leader that I can work with. Here's a pawpaw. These really take quite some time to, to mature and all. And uh, so I've got to do some more sheet mulching around this tree. And then I've got to come through and, and do some pruning here as well, uh, because that's going to be a problem the way those limbs are. And someone had asked before, so these are, you can't see it yet, but these are all oregano. I'll try to remember to show some of this. So that's oregano. Boy, there's that smell already. Oregano here coming up. Uh, that's oregano, that's oregano. So these are all oregano here. This is lemon balm right here. Oh gosh, yeah. That's all right. So and that's uh, honey locust. So that's a nice nitrogen fixer and more honey locust, more lemon balm. So we have uh, apples, peaches, cherries, apple, pear, and certainly we have the different nitrogen fixers as well. Uh, uh, another apple, uh, another pear here. This one I got to do some training on really soon. We've got. And again, these pears, they can really, they, wait a minute. Yeah, that, that is a pear. That's a little bit still too close to me right there. Even though it's bridging and not embedded bark there, I'm gonna take that off. Now, could I use a limb spreader to try and separate these some while they're young and train them? I could, but I don't like that angle. So I'm gonna prune that one. Okay. So these are mistakes that I've made. If you can get away from ever pruning when they get this darn big, do that. Think about the, the you, you want to manage these trees so that they're easily accessible for harvesting fruit and for doing whatever pruning you have to do. I'd say with apple trees, you want to have a modified central leader where we want these coming off at different heights. And the winds, I should say this, you'll see that these two are facing northwest. So that's where our winds, high winds come out of all winter long out of the northwest. And I lose lots of trees blowing in that direction. So I do tend to, you can't always see this. I actually tend, when I put a lot of these trees in, I put them at a slight angle leaning a little bit more towards the west. When I don't put them in towards the west, Hopefully that's showing up. You could see the apples and peaches and plums, they all tend to work their way over some. All of these guys tend to do that. Each one of these are, are tipped this way a little bit. This one's had nice winds out of the north here. This one I really got to do a lot of pruning with as well. And hopefully I'll get a chance to come over here and go through some of the pruning of these trees here, which I'm going to be hacking down quite a bit as well. Okay. <sighs> Let's see. See the nice collar there?
to sharpen some tools again. Should I leave these ones on and get rid of this one? I think so. So here's the collar right here. That's where it ends. Now, one of the things I always want to be looking at is here's the roadway. I don't want limbs coming out too far out here, especially straight out in this area. And I'm not a chess player, but I think pruning a, a fruit tree can be like chess, trying to anticipate how things are going to look one, two, three years in the future. And see what the growth is and how much crossing there will be. Uh,
The other thing is thinking about what equipment you use, like I talked about the roadways. Also think about if you're going underneath this as a riding mower, working underneath it, the height of the deer antlers and all. Can I put a wrap on this trunk to protect the trunk from the deer? At this height, we're in pretty good shape. Can the antlers get caught up here? I've seen that happen. I'll show you a peach tree where that did happen in a future video. Now I've got all these water sprouts coming up here and I still have some diagonals but I think I'll get the ladder there and come over and take a closer look here. Nothing like a really good three-legged ladder for working in an orchard or a food forest. <sighs> these things start to look pretty barbaric. Now you can see as these limbs grow here, they're going to cross with these ones, so I got to decide, do I take this one off and let this one come out over here and maybe remove this one? I think I will do that. See, they see Hank. That's why the geese are making the noise up there. He's up by the harbor freight. So, a lot of these lower limbs I end up taking off. Again, paying attention where that collar is. Try not to damage the collar so it can heal over. There's fruit there. Those spurs, but they're gonna come off. All right, let's get over here. What you doing, Timmy? All right, this this will end up going right back towards the center. I don't want that. Water sprouts, don't want those. I don't want limbs going back towards the center. All right, here, I'm gonna leave this one here. Maybe I can train that one out. And this one here, there's a bud that's going out right there. Well, that appears to be... All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to prune this off right here. Shoot this one out this way. Get rid of that one. This is too close. And this is coming out. So that limb, we're removing apical dominance. This is gonna send these limbs out in this direction. Ah, dang it, I, I am gonna, you see the collar there. Hopefully you could see the collar there. So I don't wanna cut into the collar, but I wanna get real close to it. Of course I, Do 
not as nice and neat as I'd like it. But that will heal over. So I got a bud here coming out here, there, here coming out. I'll nip this one off because I don't want it going this way. I don't want these going back there, even though I can have some fruit and all. All right, so I'm gonna prune this one off right here. This one right here. Oh, let's see, this one right here. So this bud's right here, it's gonna come out this direction. This one will come out this direction. This one will go here. We'll see what develops in these, and I'll, I can always come back and prune those ones later. I'll move the ladder over some now. I find that I do much less damage and by having a good ladder and, and several pairs of pruning shears. And that's a bit. Again, right at that collar. Because that one was going back in towards the center, I want to have airflow there really nice and neat. This one's going to come out this way. This one will end up going and crossing with the other one, so that one's going to come off. So I'm not as concerned about fruit at this point, but I am concerned that I get the form of the, of the tree better at this point, and hopefully I'll be paying closer attention. So this one's coming out here. It's not perfect. Actually, that one's going out correctly. Oh, dang it. Well, I've got, all right, so hold up on that Y. Dang it, dang it, dang it. Try to foot. So there's a bud there that's going to go out in that direction. No guarantees, but too close to this. Don't want competition. See, if I spent more time out here in the food forest, I could really have some really pretty. Well, now that I think about it, I don't want that one there. See, once you look at things from a different angle, it's often much easier. So it's and that's why summer pruning is good as well. I actually like summer pruning if I could make myself have more time to get the job done. All right, now that I see it, I don't want this one here. That one can come out here. That one's going to come off. That one's going to come off. So there's a collar there. Some of these collars really extend out quite a ways. Yeah, this is crossing over there. And we're getting a little bit, let me set this down. So I'll pull this limb down some. This one could shoot right out this way. I think I'm gonna go above it this time and see what we get off this one this year. This one can go this way a little bit. So these ones that shoot down, then head back up.
See how close these two are here and they're having the side branches. And then we have this one here. I'll go back and prune that one in a minute, but I'm trying to look at the direction. Traffic's going this way. Kind of like the angle this one's coming out at, so I'll leave this one here. Now this will be a nice Y here, going off in two different directions. I'll see next season what that one looks like. Uh, no, the whole thing. So I'm going to cut this one here. This one will go that way and this way. And hopefully they'll shoot up some too. Then I'll give us a branching here. Okay, I gotta get up there. So you may be able to see this, I'm not sure. See the collar there? Right above that collar. And that collar will work its way right up over there and heal that nicely.
I know I've got more to prune off of this tree. But I just don't want to go any further on this one today. And I've really got to sharpen. Oh yeah, I've got more pruning to do right there. I got more heading back towards the center. Those will be a problem. So I'm not sure how this will work out yet, but I'm going to cut this one off right there. Is that one can shoot out there. This one's going to face that way. I know when I first started doing this, I'd be worrying about the spurs which are going to produce those apples. And there's tip apples as well. And But nowadays, getting the form correct is much more important to me. All right, I'm gonna stop at this point before I go too far. I'm certainly not done pruning, and I really wonder if I should. I don't like having five, one, two, three, four, five. Part of me really wants to think about taking this one off, but for right now, and I am going to take that one off right there. So, if you've only got a couple of trees and spend the time learning to train them and prune them, if you're putting in a whole food forest, don't worry, there's a big learning curve through this whole process. Training is much more valuable than... than uh, repeated pruning, heavy pruning like this. So, and I'm not really worried about the fruit production at this point. <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna leave those for right now. I'm gonna come back and prune those later. Know enough when to walk away and then come back and do some more pruning. As soon as things start budding out and the little little stems start coming out, the little little tiny branches, that'll be bigger branches later, then go ahead and uh, come back and get more of those off. Okay, well, hopefully the uh, GoPro uh, helmet cam uh, video came out okay. I don't know how much time I'll have to edit that down, so it may be fairly long. But I just wanted to go over some of the points that I make and that it's really a a multi-stage process trying to see when I stop pruning and all. Uh, but it does look very radical when I go so aggressively removing so many of the limbs. And you can see when I don't get the collars just right, the healing process is diminished significantly, which opens the trees up to, um, to disease as well. So uh, please feel free to leave any comments or questions. I know that I've had some questions about the tree tubes, how to leave those, on, uh, how long to leave those on, especially in places where the deer are. 
I'll be going over some of the tree protective uh, means that I've been using, like the tree tubes and that causing many of the trees, even though they originally come off at the right uh, angle coming off from the trunk, when they're in a tree tube, they'll end up going uh, parallel with the tree, right up the trunk with inside of the tree tube as well. And I'll show you how I address those issues. And, uh, and that's in the second food force. And I may show you some of the aggressive uh, not salvaging, but temporary salvaging of some of the nectarines and peach trees that I love so much, but uh, have really suffered terribly from deer rub and my neglect with embedded barking uh, because they had so much extensive deer rub. I did not prune it as heavily as I should have. Um, and I realize that in hindsight, and I'll show you that video coming up as well. So if you found this video of value, please give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends. Uh, I'm always gonna try and share with you whenever I make mistakes, uh, where, where my failures are, what the pains are. I learn a lot from my fear, my failures, and my pains. And uh, it is painful looking at the mistakes that you made year after year as time goes on. So. Take care, folks. Stay healthy and uh, start growing some fruit and nut trees if you can. And start small, get experience, and get comfortable with the whole process. Take care, folks. Have a great day. Bye-bye.